Hello mon ami, my name is Dante and today I tried beating Left 4 Dead 2 all by myself. No coach, no Ellis, no Rochelle. This video features betrayal, loneliness, depression, friggin' uh, fear. Yeah, that's right, this video is real sad. Pull out the tissues because oh boy, it's a roller coaster of emotions. But before we dive headfirst into the challenge, I'm gonna let you know that this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Listen, we're all men here, right? Yeah, we're all men here. Are you sick of having hair in awkward places, huh? Does it get a little sweaty, huh? A little uncomfortable? I'm talking about your balls, man. Don't avoid the question. Well, lucky for you, Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of tools and formulations from their all-in-one performance package kit. Let's check it out! The Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof trimmer is infused with some advanced skin-safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts. Oh my god, dude, we even got some ball deodorant. You don't want to go have dinner with your girlfriend's family with unseemly balls, now do you? We got the weed whacker for your nose and ear hair. We got the Shears 2.0 luxury nail kit for your fingies and toes. And for a very limited Limited time, you get all this and two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use promo code DANTE20 at manscaped.com slash DANTE. Make sure to use my code to save money, okay? You'll get 20% off and your balls will thank you. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. So why is this challenge difficult? Well. You see, other than the fact that this game was designed to be played with four people at all times, and even then you can find yourself struggling a lot, there's these things called special infected. They're like regular infected, only special. So why is this challenge difficult? Now, hordes by themselves weren't a problem, okay? I'd just hide in a place with only one entrance and mow them down. But the special infected? Oh no, they were damn near impossible. Four of the eight special infected are instant deaths if they manage to get you. The smoker strangles you with his tongue, jockey rides you like a horse, hunter pins you to the ground, and the charger pounds your cake into the pavement. All of these have no escape, by the way, so if I ever got caught like this, that's a hard restart of the level. And guess what? Three of these guys spawn every 30 seconds or so. So I may get a smoker, a hunter, and a jockey all coming at me at once. Not to mention a tank can spawn with them, and there could also be a witch in my path, both of whom are pretty well insta-kills. You see, each thing by itself isn't that bad. It's when you have a horde on you, with a hunter jumping around, while a tank is chasing you at Mach 5 speed where the problems start to arise. <sighs> this challenge was a tough one. You may be asking, but Dante, how do you play by yourself? There's no option in the main menu. Ah yes, you, you see on PC, you can do something called console commands, kind of like cheat codes. I activated them in the settings, pressed the little swirly key on my keyboard, and simply wrote, kill coach Ellison Rochelle. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I would never do that to these guys. Instead, I simply removed them from this existence. In other words, I sent them to another dimension. It's Shrek. I'm so happy. All right, everything here seems straightforward, but what's my goal? Well, my goal is to beat one of the campaigns all by myself, or at least see if it's even possible. There are many to choose from since the latest Left 4 Dead update, but I wanted to make sure to choose one that wasn't too short. I started with my personal favorite campaign, Dark Carnival. This was a huge mistake. Also, I don't know if you guys even like Left 4 Dead, so if you want to see more videos of it in the future, click the like button so I know you enjoyed. The challenge started out alright. I arrived on the highway with the squad, deleted them from this existence, only leaving behind the things they were carrying to remember them by, and I set off into the spooky night all by myself. So at this point, I didn't know what the good strat was. To mow down every zombie on the way to be ultra safe, to speedrun to every exit, or a bit of both. I just kind of went with it. The beginning wasn't too bad, I made sure to take out every strangler on the road while staying near my infinite ammo stash because just one zombie was enough to slow me down and screw me over. But then, I heard it. Would it surprise you to hear that jockeys were by far the toughest special infected for me to go against? They're just so damn sporadic and hard to hit, not to mention they're damn near impossible to stun. Hunters can be easy, just shove them as they jump at you, you know, and then take them down. Get a charger to run into a wall and waste his charge, and the smoker could be tricky, but at least he was easy to shoot. But not the jockey dude, oh my god. Most annoying thing ever. So yeah, I spent a little too much time in this spot, and before I knew it, a smoker grabbed hold of me and everyone ganged up on me like a pinata at an 8 year old's birthday party. Okay, not a problem, let's try again. This time, I was a lot more careful, but also went a bit faster. It seemed like the longer I stayed in the level, the higher the chances I'd get caught by something, so it was best to just get to the exit as quickly as possible. And it worked! I somehow got to the exit with 58 health and 112 kills under my belt. One level down, four to go. 
This one was super tricky, but it was here I discovered a new strat. I'd get all the nearby zombies attention, run back to the safe house, and mow them down at the door. This would give me a decent head start when I went out, and I could even take out the special infected this way. I was doing alright, had somehow taken out a ton of special infected along the way. Hell, I even took out a horde. But the complete piece of garbage known as the witch was directly in my path with no way to avoid her. Are you kidding me? As if I didn't have enough problems to deal with. In situations like this, the witch was pretty well unavoidable. I figured out how to deal with these situations later, but since I don't really play this game that often, I tried doing it the old fashioned way. That is, until a charger came at me full force and I accidentally shot the witch. Yeah, this attempt was a fail. Fail after fail after fail and I had enough! Anytime I'd be doing well, either a tank would decide to spawn or a witch would be right in the middle of a narrow path. It seemed like there was no good way to go about this and I just had to hope to get lucky after a billion tries. Sometimes I'd even have to wait for things to open and start, meaning usually an infinite horde would be on top of me, not to mention I'd have to look out for those three special infected every 30 seconds while this was happening. One time, the witch even spawned in the middle of this narrow stairway and I knew it was over. I just accepted my fate at that point. After about 45 minutes, annihilating a horde along with a hunter and a jockey, I was somehow able to make it to the safe room by the skin of my teeth. By the way, my weapon of choice was the AK-47 or whatever you call it, and I later found out that having a melee weapon on me was absolutely needed. Or sorry, melee? Apparently I've been saying this word wrong all my life. Uh, let's just say after seeing this, I finally understand why you guys might be annoyed with me. And they're carrying treasures from the pyramid! The stolen treasures! Fine, I'll say melee from now on, okay? Here's where my dreams ended, the love tunnel. See, open areas are fine. I can weave and dodge my way past the small infected and eventually herd them into a big enough pile to take them out. This saved a lot of time and made things a bit easier for speedrunning to the exit. But the love tunnel had no wiggle room and lots of tight corners, meaning jockeys loved to wait around walls for me. I found out from the last level that things grabbing me weren't for sure an insta-death. See, if a jockey was on fire, or a charger let's say, the fire would slowly take their health down before they could get me and I'd escape safe and sound. But this was extremely rare and most of the time I'd end up dying anyway. My first strategy was to kind of wipe out the tunnel, run back, take out the special infected, and then rinse and repeat until I had a decent head start. But this took a lot of time and if I was lucky enough to meet a tank, he'd just bust down the safe room door and ruin my life. Anyway, I found out the only way to do this was to speedrun, baby, what a surprise. The thing is though, after spending about an hour and 45 minutes on this single level, I decided that I just couldn't do it. Not only would a tank spawn half the time near the end, but when I did get to the roller coaster, there'd always be a jockey or two waiting for me at the end and they'd always get me in the tunnel, every time! So I gave up and tried a new campaign, no mercy. The new plan was to waste no time and just go all out on my melee weapons. The first level was really easy. That is, until a hunter ambushed me literally 10 feet away from the safe room door. That one really hurt my soul. So I tried again, beating cops with their own batons, defeating special infected the whole way there, and ultimately dying over and over again. I thought this damn challenge was hopeless, until I got my hands on the katana. Aw oh, baby, I was slicing the boys up as they came at me and I was frigging unstoppable. All I had to do was walk down the alley, make my way down the deserted street, and avoid the alarmed car. But that's when I heard it. With my palms sweaty and my knees spaghetti, I slipped into the safe room and slammed the door shut. Yes, I freaking did it! Apparently, as long as you speed past the witch, she won't wake up. I didn't know this, I really thought that no matter what, if you get too close, she'd always chase you. But as long as you're by yourself, she doesn't have enough time to react. This was one victory, but I realized I still had four levels left to go. The second one wasn't too bad. I killed the jockey in the vent and ended up getting boomed on, but luckily, because of my katana and the fact that I was in a closed off room, I was safe. I made my way to the door switch, activated the horde, and prayed to the lord. My best bet was to stay in a corner and mow the psychos down with my blade and hope that I could take out any special infected that came my way. But that's when I saw him. The goddamn smoker. He lost out his tongue around my thick waist, and right when I thought it was all over, I was able to headshot him in the last millisecond and save my life. Oh, that was close. A hunter decided it'd be a good idea to come at me, and I was like, nah man, ain't no way in hell was anyone gonna ruin this attempt. Then I panicked and accidentally misclicked wasting the only safety net I had. I I'm not even kidding, this was a total accident because I'm still getting used to playing on PC. Anywho, I healed up and then immediately lost half my health to a spitter. Yay! Woohoo! Thank you! Oh boy, that was- yay! That was great! Right after that, I somehow successfully booked it to the safe house with a small horde on my back. 
Stress levels were at ungodly levels, but on the bright side, that was the second level done on my first try. The third level was a bit trickier. Not only did witches and tanks spawn like crazy, but I had to activate the forklift which had a horde coming at me. At first, I tried taking the horde out all by myself, but this really didn't seem to work. With jockeys and hunters spawning in with the horde, it just made things too difficult, not to mention a tank might spawn later anyway, wasting all the time I spent fighting. The two or three times I did do good, I ended up getting lost in the sewers while a tank was chasing me because I don't know the layout of these maps, okay? I suck. Oh, and my craziest try was when I had a witch chasing me for literally half the map. Oh man, I definitely could have made it too if I didn't get lost in the sewers. I'm so mad I didn't make it on that attempt. And so, after many, many failed attempts, I finally got my successful one. I took down all the alleyway walkers, tried to fight a tank all by myself, but then just decided to book it, and tried speedrunning my way to the hospital doors. It was terrifying knowing I had a tank on my back the whole time, but I just kept moving forward. I eventually met a witch, opened the slow sewer door, and tried my best to make my way through the complete maze of a sewer. Then a small horde came out of nowhere, and to make sure the big thick meaty boy didn't catch up to me, I used the only distraction I had left. It really didn't do much. In a last ditch attempt, I scurried up that ladder and slammed the safe room door shut behind me. Whoo! It was looking good. Until I got to the hardest part of the entire challenge, of course. The journey to the top of the hospital. I want this to be at the back of your brain, okay? On this specific level, as well as the Dark Carnival level I gave up on, I'd say tanks would spawn about four out of the five times I'd make it decently far, which would pretty well be an instant death for me. So yeah, I had that to look forward to. The main issue with this level is you gotta wait for the elevator while a horde and tons of special infected are coming at you. Now. I don't know how I was able to pull this off, but on my first attempt, I somehow was able to hold off the horde and kill all the jockeys and hunters and smokers. I mean, I even got barfed on by a boomer, yet slowly plowed my way through the dead with my health in the red. I quite literally only had 6 health left and healed on the elevator. I was so proud and life was good. Until a complete scumbag of a hunter jumped at me from behind his hidey hole and ruined my life. This single mistake would cost me the next two hours of my time. Attempt after attempt and I just couldn't recreate that successful elevator beatdown. That f***ing jockey would always end up getting a hold of me. I swear to god I hate those little things. I just- I just- I just- ah! I felt really cool, you know? Speedrunning up the building, slamming doors behind me so the hordes couldn't catch up to me in time, just to get annihilated at the elevator. Every single time. It seemed hopeless until I had a brilliant idea. I'd climb up the first three floors, attracting all zombies to me along the way, which would then allow me to press the elevator button, summoning the horde and all the special infected, but oh no no, here comes my distraction weapon. As these brainless freaks were busy sniffing the odor of Shrek, I'd slip my way to the non-working elevators, fall back down to the first floor, and await the timer in the comfort of my safe room. It was a flawless plan, and I executed it perfectly. That is, until a fucking jockey slipped into the elevator at the last second, this mistake would cause me another hour of my life. Eventually, I was able to slip into that sweet, sweet safe room only just barely, and here was the final level. It was mind-boggling to me that I was somehow able to make it this far all by myself. I had no idea this was even remotely doable, but my dreams were crushed because this final fight is completely impossible to do without any kind of glitch or exploit. I mean, I didn't even make it to win the tank spawns. Again, one thing at a time is fine, you know? A single tank? No problem. One jockey? Okay. Even a single horde by itself is easy to defeat, but it's when you have a horde surrounding you, with a smoker trying to lick you, with a tank charging you, all while a jockey is hopping around like a pogo sticking frog, that this becomes harder than trying to lick your own elbow. I'm aware that there's a spot you can sit at to avoid all contact with the zombies, but I believe this was patched out and you'd have to play on one of the old versions to even give yourself a chance of it working. So, can you beat Left 4 Dead 2 all by yourself? Yes, if you can find some way to survive the final battle without any exploits or glitches. I mean, I'm pretty impressed. Before I even tried this challenge, I was sure it was completely impossible to even get through one level, let alone four. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to me because I make new gaming challenge videos every time the dinosaurs go extinct. Make sure to click that bell though. If you don't click that bell, you pretty well aren't subscribed to me, so make sure to click that bell. Thanks for watching, check out all the other gaming challenges on my channel, and I'll see you all in my next video.